Is the story about God splitting or parting the Red Sea true? In today's video, we will examine some of the most exciting explanations of this uber popular Bible account. Let's get started. In the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 and 22, it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. This biblical passage was recreated in the 1956 film, The Ten Commandments. So, does this event really happen in history? To answer that question, we need to know first the location where this event happened. The Hebrew name of the place of the crossing is Yam Suf, which is traditionally identified as the Red Sea, a narrow sea between Africa and Arabian Peninsula. But after the discovery of the earlier version or manuscript of the Book of Exodus in the Qumran cave known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, scholars found out that the original meaning of Yam Suf is not Red Sea, but actually the Sea of Reeds. Experts, however, debate on the exact location of the Sea of Reeds. Some argue that it is a lake that has been dried up after the construction of the Suez Canal. Others point out the Lake of Tennis as its possible location due to its proximity to Migdol, as mentioned in Exodus chapter 14 verse 2. Bible scholars argue that Yam Suf has been mentioned in the Bible several times. Examples are Numbers chapter 14 verse 25, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 40 Joshua chapter 2 verse 10 and 1 Kings chapter 9 verse 26 and the name has always been used referring to Red Sea a much deeper body of water, which is consistent with the description of the parting of the sea story, specifically the walls of waters left and right. Now that we have identified the possible location of the miraculous event, let's examine what caused the splitting or parting of the Red Sea. Some argue that a tide may have been the cause of the drying of the land of the Red Sea. In fact, in some places in the world, the tide can cause sea bottoms to dry for hours and then come back again. In fact, in 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte and a small group of cavalry were crossing the Gulf of Suez, the northern end of the Red Sea on the dry land, and suddenly the waters returned, almost drowning them. Another explanation is that there might be a reef bridge present in the area when the wind blown. It exposed the reef bridge, allowing Moses and his people to cross the sea. Still, others point out that a tsunami had caused the event. The reasoning is that before a tsunami happens, the water recedes into the sea, leaving the sea floor bare, allowing for Moses and the Israelites to cross the sea. The problem, however, is that during a tsunami, the water draws back for only 10 to 20 minutes. That duration won't actually be enough for hundreds of people to cross. Still, another hypothesis is that a magnetic anomaly happened on the Earth during that time, which caused the waters to part. It has been proven in lab tests that powerful magnets could separate a small portion of water. Yet another version is being offered in that a strong wind with over 60 miles per hour can push back waters, creating a storm surge on one location and dry area on the opposite direction. 
a coastal effect known as wind set down. All the explanations given thus far attempt to disregard the power of God. Winds of that strength blows randomly. It cannot be controlled. Also, after pushing the waters back, there needs to be a force strong enough to hold the walls of waters. The wind needs to stop during the crossing as the people could be carried by the strong winds. Another thing to consider is that after the Israelites crossed, the force that holds the walls of water suddenly withdraws, causing the waters to come back, drowning all of Pharaoh's army, chariots and horses included. The description of the story necessitates a powerful being to execute this kind of miraculous event. Only God can do this seemingly impossible phenomenon. What did we learn from the story of Moses and the parting of the Red Sea? First, we learned that God is powerful enough to rescue those who faithfully serve Him. Secondly, He is the God who is just. He punishes those who oppose His plans. And lastly, we should trust the Bible as God's true word. Tell me in the comments your thoughts. If you want to learn more, check out our amazing videos on the right and subscribe to my channel to catch all of my upcoming videos. Good day and God bless you always.